this video, I continue my journey with Free and Easy Traveler from the cloud forests of Monte Verde to the Caribbean style town of Puerto Viejo. In this video, you're going to see whitewater rafting, old school bicycle cruises around Puerto Viejo, a visit to an animal sanctuary, a treacherous crossing into Panama, and some crazy deep sea snorkeling. We rafted down the Poquare River, full of class 3 and class 4 rapids. It was actually the film site for the original Jurassic Park movie. It was the most isolated we were on the trip, and we were well rewarded with lots of natural beauty and untouched wilderness. This river serves as a natural border between the indigenous who still live their traditional lives and the rest of Costa Rica. Whitewater rafting can be traced back to 1811, when the first recorded attempt to navigate the Snake River in Wyoming was planned. With no training, experience, or proper equipment, the river was found to be too difficult and dangerous. Hence, it was given the nickname Mad River. The first rubber raft was made by Lieutenant John Freeman and Horace H. Day, believed to be built in the 1840s. They planned to survey the Rocky Mountains and Great Plains. Although invented back then, it wasn't until the turn of the century that the first commercial rafting trip took place. One of the things I love most about rafting is getting a look at the vegetation. Life just finds a way to live. Just growing on rocks in the most amazing ways. It really felt like we were in the wild. Our next stop was Puerto Viejo in the province of Limon. Once known as Old Harbor, when Spanish was institutionalized by the government, the name was changed to reflect the new Spanish-speaking country. It has a unique mix of Afro-Caribbean culture and a more traditional Costa Rican culture. A popular surf destination, the town is known for Costa Rica's biggest and most powerful wave, Salsa Brava. One of the reasons I'm traveling the world right now is due to technology. At the rate technology is moving, eventually the digital world will be as immersive and real as the current one we live in. Direct neural interfaces are in development. There are examples of people controlling computers and bionic limbs with their thoughts alone. And you can plug into a virtual world indistinguishable from the real world except for the added factor of human creativity. Why would a person choose to experience the real or natural world? When you can control an avatar that is the perfect version of you, why would you choose your imperfect self? Will I tell my grandchildren, or perhaps even my children, of a time when people experience the world through their own organic tissue in real physical locations? Will I tell them the times I risked a permanent game over by jumping off a waterfall? Or the time when viruses were transmitted by mosquitoes and not computer code? Will I tell them of how I had to struggle to remember words in Spanish, to barter and buy items from a Central American shop owner, and I couldn't simply instantly translate through the internet and have the item magically appear in my inventory? The world is changing, so it's worth seeing it as it is in its current state, because we may never see it like this again. Nature time with Josh and friends. I felt like vents because they take all the leaves and make them into giant columns and keep the mold from the leaves. When there's a bad leaf, you'll see there's like discarded piles or like right here. So like when somebody brings it in there, they're like, that's a bad leaf. <laughs> and then they like tell each other all the way down the line. So eventually there's like you'll find like little piles of bad leaf piles. That's so funny. There's okay. ones now. There's really, there's big, huge ones that guard the path with the very ones. Mm -hmm. The natives would use them to uh, keep their wounds cut. It's like fishes. It's really gross. So they uh, bite them? Yeah, and you'd let them bite them and they'd pop their head off. Oh my god. Talk about ingenuity. These, things, these nests are huge. Yeah. It's time for slow and deliberate facts about sloths. This is a two-toed sloth. It has two toes. They eat a diet of leaves, which are not very nutritious. So sloths can't move very fast. They spend all their time digesting. This is a baby sloth. He's digesting too. Sometimes sloths get itchy, just like you and me. 
unlike you and me, sloths digest for a week or two before climbing down to take a poop. The sloth is now getting out of bed. You'll notice the similarities to a human teenager or someone my age with a hangover. Sloths don't get hangovers because sloths don't drink. I find it surprising that all the sloths haven't been eaten yet. So slow. Remember how I said sloths like leaves? It's true. In Panama, they consume 2% of all leaves in the rainforest. This bird liked to bother the sloth. He was kind of mean. But this bird... This is some sort of dancing seabird. It's dancing to fool the worms into thinking it's raining so we can have an easy quick lunch. Party on, dancing seabird! So this one we have here, like I said, this is the ocelot. This is the third biggest wildcat we have in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. This is the one that came here since he was very young, about two weeks old. Exactly uh, what he came here so young to the yeah. center of when he was really, really tiny. Mm -hmm. And he grew up here with us. Every single day he goes with us to the forest. Um, he goes at 7.30 in the morning with one of the girls that take care of him as well. And then at 2 o'clock or so in the afternoon time, he goes with me to the forest. And every single day he goes to the forest with us. Um, <laughs> he just goes with no leash around his neck, no rope around his neck, and he can do as much as he wants mm -hmm. out there. But his natural instinct still is to stay close to his mom. So for him, me and the other girl is kind of his parents. They stay close to us all the time. He's a nine months old at this moment, nine to ten months old. Sometimes he goes to the forest and he will be there all day long into the jungle. Um, sometimes he will come back right away with us. Sometimes when he stays into the forest, he would usually uh, just wait for us to come back and call him out. Mm. And when he listens to us calling him, he will usually come back when he recognizes the voice. Oh, nice. What's his name? His name is Namu. This is a caiman. I think it looks like an alligator, but I don't know. This is an anteater. He eats ants. Go figure. This poor guy had brain damage, but he's recovering quite nicely. Look at him climb. I didn't even know ants eaters could climb. I bet he's looking for some tasty ant treats. These are raccoons. They look like little robbers wearing little robber masks. How cute. Too bad they're kind of assholes. This is a red-eyed tree frog. I don't know anything about it, but it looks cool. This is a different frog. He's different. Who are you? This is a baby howler monkey. His name is Tantino. They found some children playing with him, so they rescued him so he wouldn't starve to death. They take him out to teach him to climb because monkeys need to know how to climb. Howler monkeys are the second largest monkeys in Costa Rica, but they're definitely the loudest monkeys. The first time I heard one, I thought it was some sort of demon pig. He didn't make any noise. He's too cute, I guess. Hola! Ahora vas a llorar, no? Espeta. Tranquila. Oui. Oh, my God. Oui. No. <laughs> What's the same? Oh, my gosh. He's so cute. Oh, he was mommy. mommy. So, as you can see, guys, this is the size that they will come here to the center. Some of them come even smaller than this. So at the very beginning, the need always to be with someone. Here, before making that noise, that was a sad noise, a kind of crying noise for the mom. Mm -hmm. After that little baby, when she starts to grow up, mm -hmm. the second stage of her will be coming inside here, interacting with other monkeys, so she doesn't get too much contact with the humans and then stay attached to humans. Mm -hmm. And that one you see, they're talking with Josh Pink over there on the side. <laughs> it's a little white-faced capuchin monkey. He's having a good time with you right now, Josh. Yeah, man. After Puerto Viejo, we cross the border into Panama to go to Bocas del Toro. This border crossing was among the most unique I've ever seen, personally. There's a bridge linking the two countries, but neither country is laying claim to the bridge, so neither country is repairing the bridge. And as you'll see in the video, the bridge is not in any state you'd see in North America and still being used. 
just, I'm here, I'm now in 1241. Oh, time difference. <laughs> yeah. You're a time traveler. Bye, Costa Rica. Hello, Panama. deep sea snorkeling, although they didn't give us snorkels, and I'd say this is shallow sea, but you definitely got to uh, dive a lot deeper under the water. The paddle in front acts as a sort of fin that you can use to change your depths in the water as well as spin around in circles and generally maneuver as you're being pulled behind a boat on a string. I found this to be really awesome, so just watch the footage. Until then, please subscribe, like, comment, and share, including websites like Reddit, Twitter, or Stumblebomb. <laughs>